Hey everyone, it's uh, Justin Jay here from Tin Can Creative. We are here to talk a little bit about downsizing and getting rid of stuff. In order to prepare to live on the road and be in a really small space, we had to do a massive amount of downsizing. We sold so many of our possessions from our house, almost all of our furniture, gave stuff away to friends, had yard sales, did all of that to get rid of things. And even though we got rid of all of that stuff, we still struggle with keeping things organized. We still we hold on to things that probably shouldn't hold on to. Yeah, we hold on to a lot of things that like we this, shouldn't. Like this stress ball that my friend gave me. Was, stress melon. I've got the stress cabbage too. Stress cabbage. We're here in Flagstaff, Arizona, and it's been really great because we've been able to hang out with some awesome people that we've met on the road, including our friends Ben and Amy, who are from Minnesota, but now live on the road full time as well. And Amy is a professional organizer, so we're gonna link in the description below an interview we do with her because it's awesome and she knows so much about this and she helps her clients with this exact thing, downsizing. So for today, what we're gonna do is we just have a bunch of clutter around our place so we're gonna go through downsizing exercise and get rid of some stuff and you guys could watch. <laughs> and hopefully learn and see how we sort of go through that process and the questions we ask ourselves. So we really hope this video is gonna help you A, maybe get inspired to start downsizing yourself. B, you know, learn some helpful tips of things that we do and it could help you on your little journey. I wanna mention one of the first things that Amy mentions in our interview to really start with a why. Why do you want to downsize? Why is it important to declutter? And for us, in the beginning, it was really important for us to downsize and declutter because we wanted to live in an Airstream and live you know, in 200 square feet. And why did we want to do that? Well, we wanted more freedom to travel and see the world because we love traveling and we love seeing new places. You have to start with your why. Why do you want to downsize and declutter? Downsizing kind of becomes something that becomes part of your process of just living. It's not, it shouldn't just be a one-time event. It kind of becomes part of your everyday life. We found it really important for us to, to show you how we do it, so. Let's do this. Let's do it. One of the first things we like to do is to start with things that aren't that important. Like things that you're not going to be sad if you missed things that are easy to, to get rid of. We have this little basket and sometimes like old receipts, like I just pulled out all these old receipts and these Apple App Store gift cards that we used up that I don't know for whatever reason we were saving them because you never know. What if there's still money on it, right? No, we know that they're done. So these are going, these little papers are going. We've got some old batteries. We've got, just I don't know, I must have ate a cough drop and then just threw the wrapper. All the time. This is not, the time nor place to be talking about my rapper throwing habits. I'm a bad I'm working on it. What I started to do, what, and once again, stress ball, but is start to look in here and start to organize, start to see the things that aren't really that important and need to get going. And so step one, start with the easy stuff and make piles. See if there's categories that start to form. For example, I'm starting to see that most of the things in here are actually cords and headphones and stuff. So this could be a great catch-all for those types of little things. So we're gonna keep that for this. This old iPhone case from my old iPhone, which we've already sold on eBay. <laughs> we actually tried to sell all the cases with the iPhone, but the person who bought them was like, don't send the cases. So I think we found a home for two other cases, but this one, not so much, so we're gonna send that one to the thrift store. And my other interesting thing I found is this chapstick, which I just sent through the washer and dryer on accident, so that's gonna just have to go to the garbage. Okay, so we've been carrying this flashlight around for a few months. It's a cheap flashlight from Amazon. It seems like it's built well. It's not really. It hasn't been working. I tried to fix it four or five times. I couldn't fix it. I thought I could eventually fix it, but I can't, so it's going. Still have this around. The hard drive of my computer died last week and I bought a new hard drive. This is the old hard drive. It won't work at all. I have all this information backed up, so gone. This is going goodbye too. We made Rice Krispie Treats once and now this has kind of been in our pantry for like months and we don't just eat Rice Krispie cereal. We don't really eat cereal. So either we need to go make more Rice Krispie treats or... I might be stale though, this one. Yeah, that's cool. So sometimes you find yourself carrying around things you really don't need on the road. 
bike shops happen to have bike boxes available pretty often. So when I do sell my bike, um, I could just go in there. So this will save us quite a bit of room. Another interesting thing is this really pretty, like, I don't know if you could see if the sun is going through it, but we got this when we moved into our first house. We bought it in Ithaca. It's this pretty little glass orb that you kind of hang in a window and it broke. We glued it twice and it keeps breaking. We're gonna give it one more try, but it might just be that we try to find a new use for this somehow or just need to get rid of it because we've just been hanging onto it and it's not really providing us any joy by sitting somewhere we keep forgetting about it. Cheers. Cheers. To decluttering. We've got our special guest. Amy is here. If you haven't seen our interview with Amy, definitely watch that. So we're going to ask Amy a couple questions, maybe, and see what she... Oh, Selby made a guest appearance. Yes. That's okay. Selby, come on. Selby loves on. to declutter. Selby's helping us declutter by eating all of Cooper's bones that he doesn't <laughs> eat. Uh, so here's a question for you. Yes. We've got this little orb that we used to hang all the time, mm -hmm. you know, in the window. So, you know, we've tried to fix it like multiple times mm -hmm. and we got it when we first bought our old house. So mm -hmm. it has a little bit of sentiment sentimental value, but not really. I mean, so we just like, and we still like it, but we fixed it twice and it kept breaking. So now it just kind of sits. It was, that was one of the things in our catch all bin and it just sat on the bottom, sat on the bottom. So what would you do? What would you say about this? So it's, it's important to you enough that you've yeah. kept it for this amount of time. Yeah. Are you keeping it because you have this hypothetical to-do list of we'll get it fixed eventually? Yes. Okay. Now, looking at kind of where you are and everything you do every day, is that really going to be a priority over everything else? No. <laughs> <laughs> Which no. is usually the answer. Yeah. We, yeah. we commonly, we'll keep things around just because it's like, oh, what's another to do? No big deal. We'll just get it fixed when we're in town or we're, you right. know, or when I see this person, I'm, I'm going to give it to them. Give it to them. To them. <gasps> In reality, yeah. like our schedules are already really packed. We fill our day with things that we actually want to do. And we keep pushing these other to-dos on the side. On the side. So I would say, you know it's broken. You're probably not going to get it fixed. So I would just recycle it. That's what we're doing. <laughs> we're recycling it. <laughs> Another really good way to start to pick through items that you might want to start with getting rid of are things you haven't worn, you know, things that you avoid in your closet and you'll know what you avoid because <laughs> usually they're the things that never, you know, only get worn if like we're in desperate need of like shorts or something or mountain bike clothing. And that's actually what we've got going on here. These are the first pair of mountain bike shorts I've ever owned and they've got a sweet stripe on the side and that's because it makes you faster, I heard. It's only one side so it only makes you a little fast. Anyways, I'm just gonna get rid of these guys. Haven't worn them, I kind of avoid them and I did buy myself a new pair of mountain bike shorts, so that's another thing to keep in mind is if you buy something new and it can replace something else, then it's a good item for downsizing. So that's gonna go to a new home, a thrift store. The thing is too, mountain bike shorts and mountain bike apparel is kind of pricey, so I think it's gonna make someone's day when they find it at a thrift store. I got some new underwear a while back and they're not, I won't show you what they look like, but, and they're not like, you know, they're kind of granny panties. They aren't very comfortable and I get like a perma wedgie. They obviously don't bring me joy. They're not super comfortable. I'm like avoiding wearing them. So these are probably just gonna become rags or just get thrown out. This conditioner, I like avoid using it. Just, just going, almost done anyway. I'll use this one. It says scalp treatment and it makes more dandruff. Tapped into this idea yeah. that this next new product is gonna work, which I, I'm the same way. Okay. So when I was intentionally downsizing, I said, okay, I get to pick, it doesn't matter what the cost is. Mm -hmm. My favorite moisturizer, my favorite shampoo and conditioner, whatever. These are the products now that are gonna be my go-to. I'm gonna eliminate any new decision-making. Mm. I'm just going like, this is my, this is my go-to. Hmm. Yeah. And then you can be more intentional with that purchase. But I always know that this is where I know I can get my product when we're on the road. Mm -hmm. And this is when I know I need to replace it. Okay. And so it, it eliminates this yeah. now because you probably have some guilt with all those shampoos. Yeah, like, like well, where, I need where to be am I using gonna, these? Where right? am I going to put them? Like, right. 
And like, what if none of them are my favorite? What if I'm like, I hate all of these? Just get rid of all of them and Talk start fresh. Them. Yep, really. avoid that sunk cost fallacy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yesterday's dollar means nothing today. If you're not going to use them or if they make you feel bad, if every time you look at those products, there's mm. even that tinge of guilt, that, mm, you know, that thing mm. that makes you kind of feel bad, like, oh, I made a bad purchase. Get rid of it. Just move on. Well, we're keeping it because we're well, in our former life before yeah. RV life, you know, yeah, you got a little bit more dolled up and went out. Yeah. And, but in reality, out on the road, it's, mm -hmm. I, the same way, I had cosmetics that I was just like, yeah, slowly calling through and going, it's, this isn't even a value of mine anymore. It's just a value shift. Yeah. You know? So one technique you might want to use is to just ask your partner, like, what do you, what do they think you have too much stuff of? Jess says I have too many t-shirts, which they honestly, they fit into this bin. So I feel like it's not- It's overflowing the bin. It's not, I mean, I'm wearing one and maybe there's one in the laundry, but maybe I could get rid of one of these. Jess made this one. I like that one. This is our bike club. A lumberjack, a tree, just bought me that. I just made this one as well. I like that one, it's got a bear. I really like that one. This is a green one, it's very comfortable. This is probably my favorite t-shirt. This is merino wool. I mean, why would you get rid of a merino wool shirt? It's ridiculous, you just let it wear into the ground. It's merino wool, I'm not gonna get rid of that. This is, oh that's a, this is merino wool as well. This is a possibility, this is like a good shirt. It kinda has a weird color to it. it, it it used to be like a cream color, it still is. But now it just kind of looks like a dirty white. This is, this is high on the list. I know you want me to get rid of this. Oh no, not that shirt. Really, you want me to get rid of it? No, I mean, yeah, I want you to get rid of the tank top. It's so silly. Just wants me to get rid of the Smile Jamaica shirt. I think I've worn this thing once last year and maybe none the year before. I just took it because it was really small. I think I'm gonna get rid of it. Yeah, don't need it. What do you think about this one? It's one of my only light color shirts. I mean, it does kind of look like skin. It's like a skin color. It's fleshy. It's, it's too very fleshy looking. <laughs> yeah. Like you look tan right now, so it doesn't look bad, but like it'd be a bad shirt to wear in the winter time. You would look like should I really, naked on the top. Should I really get rid of it? it put it in put it in the pile of maybe. So we're gonna put we're gonna declare a maybe pile. This might get cut by the end of the day. It's on the chopping block. Just the pillows. So I asked Jay what my, th like what do I have a lot of? And Jay said, pillows. So what do you think, Amy? Do I have a lot of pillows? Is this too many pillows? Like I've got, there's a couple in the back. <laughs> this, well, these look nice. These actually mm -hmm. are great for when you want to mm -hmm. sit against the wall. Mm -hmm. And then I would say like, I actually sit on these flatter pillows like when I do work because this cushion is the worst. But honestly, like I probably only need one of these pillows and I was thinking maybe getting rid of, like starting small, mm -hmm. just getting rid of one pillow. <laughs> or is it like this pillow? Gosh. So here's a question you can ask yourself. Okay. If you were at some kind of a store in town, let's just say like a little mm -hmm. boutique and yeah. there was a pillow that you really loved, mm -hmm. but you had to get rid of one pillow here, to make room for that pillow, which one would it be? And you did that without a lot of hesitation. Yeah. So. That's this pillow. This is the one. <laughs> Do you want it for your... <laughs> Do you need a pillow? No. Cardinal sin decluttered. Okay. We also do a lot of library loan via um, just our Libby app through our local library. So we have access to that on our iPads. So we don't really need to uh, store a lot of books or carry around a lot of books. But we did have a couple books that we brought along with us that we don't really need anymore. So these four are gonna go and that really just whittles it down to like a couple recipe books. I really like Austin Kleon books and I sometimes reread them quite a bit because they're my favorite, so. When you're first starting to downsize, don't really worry so much about the things that are harder for you to get rid of. Like if it kind of draws some sort of emotion, like give it some time, like start with the easy stuff. But I just wanna show you one item that I'm gonna be getting rid of that I have some emotional ties to, and it's these sneakers. <laughs> these are the sneakers I wore for 
the one and only marathon I'm ever gonna run because I'm never gonna do that again. Um, but it was amazing and great experience, glad I did it. And I've just kind of been hanging on to these sneakers as my running sneakers. And I actually haven't been running nearly as much, A. B, I have another pair of these Allbirds, so if I wanna go for a short run, these are great. Recently I put these on and they hurt my feet really bad. This is a good reason to say goodbye to these sneakers. These were great sneakers, they served me well, and maybe they'll find a new home, maybe they'll just move on to the afterlife. Just going through stuff. This is what we found we could just get rid of today. We have more stuff that we're actually gonna sell, but we didn't wanna put it out here in the dirt. We're gonna go find places for this to go. Some of it's just garbage, some of it's recycling, which we would get rid of anyway, recycling center. We decided Cooper doesn't really lay on his, uh, his outdoor cot, so we're gonna donate that. Hopefully another dog is gonna find some joy laying on that thing. During all this, we got a really good chance to do some reorganization in the Airstream and found some more efficient spots to put things and more sensible places to put things. Oh. Nice. Money bomb. I'm a bad so we were showing you how we downsize and maybe it looks different for you. You know, we just kind of did a quick sweep and this is sort of our first run, but we know there's more yet to get rid of. There were some things that we kind of forgot that we had that we sort of put more forward facing in a cabinet or put out so that we would actually use it. We hope that you found this video useful, helpful, inspiring to start your downsizing journey and kind of keep it as a, uh, not just a one-time thing, but a practice that you continue that you keep continuing to do. Because obviously, even though we live in 200 square feet, we still have things that we buy that we end up not using and that we still need to get rid of. So if there's anything we wanna show you is that we're also human and we, we also buy silly things. Luckily, it's not as much as we used to um, and we definitely don't have as much stuff, but it's also very apparent when things start to get crowded in the RV we start to feel this like sort of anxiety of like, there's just a lot of stuff. So um, for us, it's kind of become more of a practice and we hope that it inspires you too. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and click the little bell if you wanna get notified when we make another video. Yeah, and let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or things that have helped you downsize. And stay tuned for our next video, which is where we get rid of stuff. Look really large when I'm like up here and you're back there. Are you recording? Yeah. Hey guys, some unfortunate news. Jay got really gigantic and just shrunk. Like, <laughs> you do like. Cute. I've been eating. <laughs> this not, is what they do for like for. Uh, I've not been eating. <laughs> this is what they did. They did tricks like this for um. Oh. Uh, like Lord of the Rings to have the hobbits like really small. Oh, so I'm like a hobbit and you're like. A big awkward, giant. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, That's it's so it's a huge difference. Uh, all right. Let's get this show on the road. Like what if I turn to you like this and talk to you? Like look at me like we're having a conversation. Oh my like, god. <laughs> I will crush you. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, let's be normal. I'm a bad on bringing him into I'm a bad on breaking vote with no ID. I'm a bad on brother girls call me Poppy. <laughs> I'm a bad hombre, you know you can't stop me